Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We are so excited to be hosting today a live VIP tour of our brand new electric trains. We'll have a virtual reality experience so you can see what the inside of the trains will look like. And then we'll also have the team in Salt Lake City talk about what's happening at the actual facility. We are joined by members of the Caltrain team, Michelle Bouchard, Chief of Rail, members of the Stadler team, Charlotte and Christoph, and our very, very special guest, Congresswoman Jackie Spear. Jackie Spear, would you like to introduce the event and talk about it? Thank you, Casey. <laughs> well, just that little snippet of a, a video shows you how exciting a change can be. And what's so important about these new train sets is that it's going to allow us to put so many more people on Caltrain over the next 20 years. Right now, before the pandemic started, uh, we had 65,000 people riding on Caltrain each day. And we're gonna be able to triple that number over the next 20 years uh, with electrification and with these brand new train sets. Uh, and it's the equivalent of taking four lanes of traffic off of 101 and 280 every day. I mean, imagine how much more gridlock there would be without Caltrain. And now that we're gonna have these brand new, beautiful uh, new cars and electrification, uh, just means that we're going to have faster travel times, uh, we're gonna have improved air quality, and we're gonna have great comfort. And that's what we're going to see in a matter of seconds is um, how beautiful and how comfortable these new uh, cars are. I had a preview last week and I'm pretty, pretty wowed by it. So we'll turn it over to Michelle to start talking through some of the really improved amenities you'll see on the new train. Okay, great. Well, um, when you actually stand in these cars in Salt Lake, this is exactly what they feel like. Now this Here's, is what I love more than um, anything, and that is that each seat is going to have an electrical outlet. So um, I know if anyone travels a lot, that's something you desperately want to know is not just on um, the vehicle, but is working. So now I think we're gonna head through the car over to our restroom which you wouldn't think would be a major feature, but it is a major feature on this car. Um, we had a lot of consultation with our ADA community, um, as well as other folks. And again, this is another thing where we had a, a full mock-up of a bathroom shipped to us at Caltrain, so we could make sure that we had the appropriate um, amenities and requirements uh, for people's comfort. And yes, and there is a changing table to change your infant's diapers, something that when I was uh, a young mom and traveling on planes, I had to do it on the toilet seat. So um, that's great. Absolutely. And of course, you know, these days it's, it's important to have a facility on board to be able to wash your hands. And, um, and this helps you to do that in style. <laughs> Thank you so much, Michelle. This was a little taste of what the inside of the trains are gonna look and feel like. Uh, as Michelle said, we got a lot of input from riders and the public on this. So we're excited to give you what it's actually gonna uh, feel like. And so now we're gonna stop sharing the virtual reality part of it and turn it over to the reality of where the trains are being built in Salt Lake City and turn it over to our colleagues at staff to talk about um, what's happening there. Let's underscore the fact that it's being made in America. <laughs> Great. Uh, someone asked if it's possible, the Stadler team, we know we want to keep your Wi-Fi strong there, but if you could maybe just do a little bit of a pan around for uh, what what's behind you and talk about uh, what we're looking at. Sure. Let's take a walk. Christoph, I don't know if it's, uh, if it's easy to explain this, but I just wanted to to point out also, when Caltrain started this program, um, one of the things that we wanted to pursue was state-of-the-art safety in terms of crash energy management. So we're so happy to be 
one of the first, not the first, but one of the first to bring this kind of technology uh, into the U.S. So I don't know if you can speak to some of that while we're looking at the front of the train. So we're looking at the different approach in terms of crash management on these vehicles. So basically everything you see what's behind this portion here is a collapsible structure. So in case of a crash, this structure will collapse and actually protect all the riders and also the engineers uh, from the impacts. Um, but then also, so the interior, everything is rated for an AT impact. Christoph, why don't you talk about the yellow uh, cranes up above? I think that's the, another interesting component. Okay. Yeah, there you're looking at the trains of Eagles. Um, so these are the trains rated to lift complete car shell. So when we're looking at the, uh, the final build uh, plate of the car shell, uh, we're looking at up to 65 tons. So uh, whenever we, we need to move the cars around, we just pick them up with the, the overhead anchor train. Wow and the arms over for the daughter car. And uh, so to my left, you see train set two, which is truck building, um, standing on the production pit. Um, so as we build out the car shells, they actually sit on stands and not on their, their final trucks. And then as soon as they're ready, we bring them over to the production pit um, and we finally truck the, the car. And from here, they then go roll out to the test track and eventually to California. Basically, what, what you can see back there is a car shell, not of the California project, but also a project for California, SPCTA, being lifted over and trucked. Thanks, Christoph. I'll leave with a couple comments and then if Congresswoman Spear, you wanna wrap it up for us, we'd love to hear your kind of final thoughts on it. but. Uh, a few comments that were just, again, it's so nice for us to hear everyone that's just excited as we are about that. As a former manufacturing engineer, I have to say these trains are beautiful, very Swiss and more um, super cool. And the last comment, great to see electric trains finally coming to fruition. And I think that's a good way to end the comments and questions we heard today. So thanks so much. And Congresswoman Spear, would you like to wrap it up for us today? Well, Casey, this was um, a lot of fun and just a good news story. God knows we need good news stories right now, um, but it also means so much for um, the peninsula, for San Francisco, for San Jose, for that our whole Bay Area region who will be able to access uh, these um, trains now in a manner that is going to be uh, so comfortable, so reliable, so quiet so sustainable. I mean, it's just good news every way you look at it. And of course, we're taking vehicles off of um, the highways in the region as well. So um, we'll have lots of, of great opportunities to ride it. I can't wait for my very first um, ride on it. And I hope we have um, the luxury of um, um, celebrating by toasting a, a great job by Caltrain and Statler and um, all the great work that's been done by Michelle and her team. So um, bravo to all of you.